What's up? Today, we're talking about first light. All right, so like I said, we're gonna be talking about first light today. 2020 is behind us. We're looking at 2021 now. So basically what I wanted to do was run through all the first light gear I used during the 2020 hunting season from early season, mid season, late season, everything, and kind of run through all the pieces I used and let y'all know what I thought about it. Maybe give y'all some insight into some pieces you could get in the future to help out your layering system. We're gonna be talking about underwear, pants, rain gear, base layers, socks, gloves, insulation, all everything. So let's get going and start off on the bottoms. So first things first, underwear. These are the Wick underwear. Um, love this underwear. It is stretchy, it's incredibly comfortable. It's a lot more durable than the previous Red Desert Boxer. If anybody remembers that boxer, I used to love that boxer, um, but over time, um, there were in wear and tear, some holes would develop in the crotch area. Um, I haven't had that issue with these at all, uh, so they definitely improved that. This is my absolute go-to underwear, whether it's early, mid-season, or late season, doesn't matter. Pants. Um, my go-to pant is the Corrigate Guide Pant, all right? It is uh, super versatile in my opinion, very durable, and um, I mean, I've said before, you can, you can dang near do karate in these things because it's like a stretch nylon material. Your mobility is off the charts with these things. Uh, the one complaint that I've heard people make about this pant is that it is too noisy, okay? That might be true for some, if you hear this, it's a little bit noisy when you rub it together, okay? I haven't had any issue with that. I bow hunt coos deer all the time. They're super wiry and this is the pant that I'm wearing. So anybody that has any reservations about that, I wouldn't let that be like the absolute deciding factor on whether you buy this pant or not. Um, these come with a DWR coating on them. So absolutely no, uh, it, it's not a replacement for rain gear by any means, but if it's sprinkling, these are gonna bead water off just fine. I've gotten these things, I've had these things in all manner of weather and always done great with these pants. Um, if the noise thing, or if that's a, if a huge concern for you, or um, you're just looking for a different pant, another pant that I like to run is the Obsidian, okay? Now for spot and stock bow hunting, this thing, these pants are the ticket. They are absolutely dead quiet. They're merino wool. They have a little bit of nylon uh, throughout on a uh, little bit of nylon pieces throughout same same material as the corrugate um, those are right around the waistband up here in the crotch and then on the heel of the um of the the, the pant leg the only reason that i don't run these things for everything is because of where i live okay i live in arizona and it's super thorny and Spiny, everything wants to put holes in your clothing. Um, as comfortable and as great of a pant that these are, the, they do not hold up that well to things like cat claw. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a bush, like a shrub that has uh, thorns on it shaped like a cat claw. So it's basically barbs, okay? Um, those things pull, pull the material out of, out of these pretty easy. That's why I run the corrugate uh, more times than not because those things just hold up, man. I have not ripped a pair of corrugate guide pants. Um, but in other places, like I ran these in Idaho for nine days. It was a mid, -oct mid to late season, or sorry, mid to late October hunt. Um, these were fantastic. The, the plants there don't want to murder your clothes, so it was a different environment. Um, but for me personally, I'm my go-to is the corrugate. 
when the temps get a little bit down there, all right, um, when temps drop, I don't typically like to run a base layer bottom, but sometimes I, you, you have to, right? Uh, that Idaho trip I mentioned, I wore these. These are the Allegheny base layer bottoms. They're not the heaviest base layer bottom that First Light offers, and I, I, I that was entirely premeditated on my part to get those ones. And the reason is because a lot of the hunting I do is, is very active, so I'm hiking a lot. So to have a base layer bottom on that is super heavy, uh, it just doesn't fit my style of hunting. If if you are doing a lot of ambush hunting, you know, hunting in a tree stand, ground blind, where you're just, you're sitting, you're stagnant for long periods of time, you probably want to get something a little bit thicker than this uh, to to help deal with you know you not moving around. But for me, these things are super comfortable. I've had these things for years. And quite honestly, a lot of times I forget that I'm wearing them because they are so comfortable. So um, I wore these on that Idaho trip for nine days and never took them off. So <laughs> uh, good as new. Yeah, they worked great. Um, when the temps go down even further, okay, these right here are absolute game changers. These are the um, the puffy pants, Uncle Padre puffy pants that First Light makes. So if you were a fan at all of the Uncle Padre puffy jacket, uh, one of my favorite First Light pieces ever made, the Uncle Padre puffy jacket, um, this is basically the pants version of that. Okay, like same type of insulation. It's got the DWR coating on it reinforced back end here for sitting down and stuff so you don't you're not ripping your pants on rocks and everything um and they and they put on you, you put them on really easy all you do you, there's no like taking your boot off to put these on or anything like that all you do is unzip the side here just put your boot right through there and then just zip it back up and you're good to go. Good to good for long hours of glassing. Um, I don't have to run these a lot because I do live in Arizona, but uh, for like being up top, you know, maybe in Colorado or something, or like that, you know, Idaho, it was snowing, 30, 40 mile an hour winds. There wasn't a dude on the mountain that did not have their puffy pants on when we were glassing. Okay, so these were absolute must for a trip like that. I don't think that these are necessary at all for like early to mid season hunting really, but late season, these are freaking rad. Uncompadre puffy pants. All right, let's, uh, let's jump up top a little bit here. Absolute go-to first base layer is hands down the hooded wick, uh, super lightweight incredibly comfortable it's got a little bit of a stretch to it so mobility is not an issue um, it's got the thumb holes on it and uh, it wicks moisture uh, incredibly well so th this this base layer right here I will wear this thing pretty much from spring bear season uh, which is here it's kind of like like uh, late March all the way through july and then i'll take it also into early fall seasons august september like i go to um, colorado high country mule deer this is the base layer i'm bringing with me the temps might drop a little bit at night but the days are a lot are warmer during that time of year this is a great piece for hiking uh, when we make like a big hike in the morning we're stripping down to our base layers. This is the base layer I'm stripping down to. The hood is uniform to your head. It fits really great. And um, I just I just love this piece. This is obviously worn. I've had this thing for years. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's definitely my go-to base layer. When it gets a little bit colder, I will switch that out though for the fuse. Okay, so this is just, the only difference with this is uh, this one doesn't have a hood on it, which that's fine. But the only difference is it's just a little bit thicker than the wick. All right. Um, same features, same material, merino wool. 
Uh, it's got a little bit of a stretch to it. There's a little bit of nylon in here. Um, and, it, and it works out fantastic. So I'll wear that basically, oh, like mid-November um, through all my January hunts. If I have any javelina hunts in February, uh, that's the base layer I'm gonna wear, the first base layer. Um, so that covers, that covers the first base layer up top. Now the second layer, so I call this a mid layer, all right? Go to mid layer for me is gonna be the, the hooded kiln, all right? So if anybody was familiar with the Chama, okay? First Light came out, that was one of like First Light's first pieces they made. Um, this is basically the Chama 2.0. This thing is super rad, super durable. Um, it's got um, a lot better fit than the first Chama did. Um, and uh, the hood, the hood fits great. It's got all the same features that the wick and the fuse have. It's just a little bit thicker. So great for active hunting. I, I will sometimes wear this uh, even when I'm hiking, if it's really cold. I'll have this on over one of these base layers and I'll wear it when I'm hiking. They just work together. All this stuff, as you're building a layering system, something you need to understand is like, it's called a system for a reason, okay? All of this stuff works together. The first base layer wicks moisture away from your body and then that pushes moisture out into the second layer and, then, and so on and so forth. Right, the, the, the object here is that you wanna, you wanna keep yourself dry, okay? When you're wet, you're gonna get cold, okay? So that's why in the morning, a lot of times, you see dudes stripping down to their base layer and making a hike in the dark, and then when they get to their glassing spot, then they put all their insulation on, and they're warm like, okay? If you don't do that and you hike with your jacket on, you're gonna be absolutely soaked and on things like backpack hunts where the clothing that you bring with you is the clothing that you have, you're gonna be, you're gonna be miserable, man. miserable, man. So realize that, like all this stuff works together uh, in a chain, all right? So kiln, uh, base layer, wicked rad layer. Um, if the, when the temps drop uh, a little more, okay? So, so l l let, me, let me go back to this. I'll, I'll wear this kiln this kiln will get me through, I mean, you can essentially wear this all year, but when I switch it out is right around like late October, early November, right around there. Um, and from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Klamath instead. So that I'll use the Klamath in place of the kiln. The Klamath is a little bit thicker layer. It's fleece, dead, dead quiet very very good for bow hunting okay spot and stock bow hunting it's incredibly durable i've drugged drugged this thing through like all manner of thorns and it's still kicking this is the only one that i have all right it's still going i've had it for years the hood fits great um it's an athletic fit the fit is true and it's a it's just a fantastic a fantastic layer to have with you on uh on hunts and stuff so that's what i'm going to use i'll wear that klamath over one of these base layers when the temps get down you know lower on top of that okay um we'll get to now we're starting to get a little bit into insulation now okay this next piece is somewhat of a tweener for me all right it's kind of like it's a mid layer it's also like a insulation type layer and that is the sawtooth all right, the Sawtooth from First Light. This is basically the kiln on steroids, in my opinion, okay? It's got the same shape, everything. The only, the difference is, is the, the, the middle, the core part of this piece, it, it has a thicker insulation to it, okay? So it's gonna, it's gonna keep you warmer. Also, on top of that, if you see like this material right here is different than this. This is the material that's on the corrugate guide pan, which means that this has a DWR coating on it 
which is going to bead water off. I've, I've worn this thing in the straight rain, okay, and, and, it's, and it's done great. Again, not a replacement for rain gear, but it'll get you through. The other cool thing about the sawtooth is the back. This is all merino on the back, okay? It's not insulated back here, like the front. The front and the shoulder part, they're insulated. The back is not. That is by design because of walking around with the backpack on, all right? So your, your backpack's on, a lot of times you're sweating back there. This is there to kind of help out that situation and help kind of like push the moisture out from your back because of, the, of your backpack being on while you're hiking around and stuff. So um, great piece of gear. I wore that um, when, like I don't really bust out the sawtooth until like, I don't know. I mean, I, I wore it on that Idaho hunt that was mid to late October. I wore it over the, kil the uh, Klamath. So I went Fuse, Klamath, Sawtooth. That was like the first three pieces that I put on on that trip. And uh, after that, the next piece that now we're going to get into like true insulation here. Okay. This is the Brooks Down Vest. All right, I've never been a vest guy ever. I've just, just not something that's ever appealed to me. I brought this to Colorado though this year, um, just for a little bit extra insulation. And the reason I didn't really have an issue with that was because this thing is so lightweight and packs down so small, I literally can put it in the pocket of my corrugate guide pants. Not that I would walk around with it like that, but just to give you an idea, that's how small it gets. So it doesn't take up any room in the backpack. So I just shoved it down wherever it would fit. And I had it and I was glad that I had it because it did get down pretty, a, a little bit colder than we thought it was gonna get on that hunt. And that was, that was early September. Uh, they had just come off a snowstorm at that time of year. So it was a little bit colder than it normally is. So how I ran this on that September hunt was I went wick, kiln, kiln Brooks down vest, okay? Killer combo. I did the same exact combo when I returned uh, later that month in September. I was there, I think it was the last week, like the 24th through the 30th or you know, something like that. Um, and I'm glad that I brought it, okay? For, for how lightweight this thing is, it is it, it, it packs a punch with, with insulation. So definitely, definitely a piece that is going to be in my regular rotation, especially um, when the temps get down a little bit. Even for earlier hunts, this would be great. And you could, you could probably just like replace a jacket with this during say, if you're scouting in July, early August hunts, um, you might be able to get away with this in certain areas of the country. I know here in Arizona, like sometimes, you know, August, we leave the truck, it might be 70 degrees, maybe 60. Like, so something like this is perfect for that. All right, from there, what I would wear over that vest, okay, is like my all time favorite go to jacket First Light makes. Uh, well, actually, the improved version. So, this right here is the Uncompadre 2.0. Okay, so I mentioned earlier uh, how much of a fan I was of the Uncompadre jacket love that piece of gear this is basically the improved version of it the zipper is a lot beefier than the original one it's got all the same features on it um, the sizing seems a lot more true to size than the first version it's got the dwr coating on it like it should and um, also just like the first one it packs down into its own pocket and you can use it for a pillow if you're trying to go super lightweight on like a backpack hunt or something like that, you can nix a pillow and just bring this thing with you, put it down into its own pocket and use that as a pillow for, for sleeping. So a uh, really great piece of gear. Uh, the system that gets me through probably 85% of the year is the Wick Kiln and Uncompadre jacket that right there gets me through most situations 
From there, when it gets a little colder, I just add things into that system. That is the core system though, that I use on all hunts, all right? So it, like on that September hunt, that's what I had first, right? <clears throat> but I added in the Brooks down vest for a little bit more insulation and it worked out fantastic. So Uncle Padre 2.0, if there's one jacket to rule them all, it is the Uncompadre 2.0 jacket. <laughs> all right, now, um, another jacket that I'll add in, um, and one that has really, really grown on me, especially this year, is the Brooks Down sweater. So we talked about the Brooks Down vest, okay? This right here is the sleeved version of that, okay? The Brooks down sweater, it's uh, a <clears throat> it's down insulation. It packs down super small. It fits great. Okay, so this is a large for anyone wondering about that. Um, and basically, uh, I mean, I could get away with this for early season hunts and probably not even bring the uncompadre with me especially down here in Arizona because it's not that cold. So I would, with for that, I would go Wick Kiln Brooks Down Sweater, okay? When it got, when it gets cold, okay, so that Idaho trip I went on, um, I mean, it was down, some of the mornings, it was definitely in the 20s, it was snowing, everything. The system I ran for that was, I went Fuse, Klamath, Sawtooth, Brooks Down Sweater, and then the big dog over there that we're gonna talk about shortly, the Chamberlain, okay? So for a jacket that, for for like a extra insulation for not a lot of weight, that, that's gonna have a little bit more insulation than the vest because of the sleeves, uh, the Brooks Down Sweater is where it's at, man. So I, I'm gonna be backpacking in here within a few days, I'm backpacking into, uh, an area for coos deer for January. So the system I'm gonna bring with me is gonna be the Fuse, Klamath, Brooks Down sweater, and then the Uncompadre I'm gonna put over the Brooks Down sweater, and it's gonna work out freaking awesome. So, really like this piece of gear. Obviously it's got the, it's got a DWR on it, like most of these jackets do. I feel like that's like a necessity. But yeah, fits great, awesome piece of gear. Obviously, because it's down, it packs down super small, it's very compressible, and it's lightweight. It's almost scary how lightweight that thing is. It almost floats. So now, when the temps get like really cold, all right? Like, so it was, let me see that. That I keep referring back to that Idaho hunt because that was like the coldest hunt I've been on in a while. So one of the mornings, it was, I think it was in this, it was like 10 degrees or eight degrees, something like that. This jacket right here, man, this is like, this is the Chamberlain, all right? Super big dog for insulation, all right? Um, I've, I've actually started bringing this with me on truck hunts just to kind of keep it my truck. Uh, I just had a late archery bull hunt here in Arizona. I did not bring this with me in my backpack by any means. Um, it is down, it compresses, but it does take up quite a bit more room than the Uncompadre does in, in the backpack. Um, so if you're doing like late season, like late season backpack hunts, and you need this, keep that in mind. Um, the, a bit, the bigger jacket is just gonna take up more room. I will say like, for what it is, it is very lightweight. Um, and uh, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna do you fine. It'll compress down quite a bit, but um, it's definitely gonna take up more room than that guy will. So DWR coating, it fits great um, and kept me super warm on that hunt. The hood is so freaking comfortable. Love the hood on it. It's got a beefy zipper. The pockets, the inside of the pockets, is like a. Uh, it's almost like a. It feels like a micro. It, it feels like a micro fiber cloth almost. Um, really, really comfortable, super warm, and uh, just really good construction. It's really, it's built very well. It's built like a tank. So um, definitely, definitely 
in my system when the temps go down super low. All right, last but not least, rain gear. All right, let's talk about rain gear a little bit. I always, um, for backpacking hunts, I always have rain gear with me. Rain gear is something that kind of, if, if I'm not backpack hunting, I'll check the weather. And um, if, it, if, it's, if there's rain in the forecast, I'll bring it with me. If not, most of the time it stays in the truck. But for backpack hunts, it's cause like, when you're in the back country, you don't really know like exactly what the weather's gonna do. The weather can change like that out there. So for me, I always pack it with me. Um, the two pieces that are with me 95% of the time, all right, are the Vapor Stormlight jacket and the Boundary Storm Tight pants. All right, that combo, rain jacket, rain pant combo, gets me through pretty much the whole dang year, okay? If not the whole year. It really just depends on where I'm going throughout the year. Um, this past year, I went to Idaho, that Idaho trip I mentioned to you. Um, that trip I brought with me the Seek, okay? Which is like the big dog of rain jackets. Like if you're going to Alaska or something like that and it's supposed to be a lot of moisture, that's, that is like just like a tick below a rubber suit right there. Okay, so um, I'll get to that in a second. But the Vapor, the Vapor Stormlight and the Boundary Storm Tight uh, pants, um, they fit, they fit great. The Vapor Stormlight jacket is super ultra light. I've never um, had an issue with water like leaking on this thing. An, uh, another cool thing is that it it goes down to in its own pocket, really similar to the Uncompadre Puffy jacket. Okay, you're not going to use this as a pillow, but what I like to do um, is I'll I'll shove it down into its own pocket, and that's how I pack it with me in my backpack. So it's just like it's just neater. All right, it, it comes out to about that big right there um, in my pack. Um, and then the storm light, the storm tight pants, these are pretty similar to the puffy pants I showed you earlier, um, in terms of the zipper on the sides and how you put them on, which is really nifty. Um, I've had rain pants in the past that didn't have a zipper on the side and putting them on in the field when it's raining is a nightmare. So this zipper on the side, all you gotta do, you don't gotta take your boots off or anything like that. Just undo it, put your boots right through the waist here, and then zip it back up and you're dry, okay? Reinforced back end here for sitting down. A lot of times, um, what folks will do too is in order to access their pockets, there's another zipper up top here by the waist. They'll just undo that zipper right there at the top. So you're still connected at the waist here, all right? But you'll be able to reach your hand in and grab like your phone or whatever in your pocket. So that's pretty nifty right there, kind of a cool feature. And another thing I, mean, I found myself doing um, when there's like, say, snow on the ground is I would actually use these to just sit on. Um, that was back before I brought a glassing pad with me. Um, I would take out my rain pants and sit them down on the ground. And that was my seat, help keep my pants dry. So um, the reason, uh, I'm just back up a little bit. The reason I bring the rain gear with me, especially on the backpack hunts, is I mentioned the weather, but when you're out on these backpack hunts, the clothing that you have with you is the clothing that you have with you, okay? So you're not like, oh, I'm wet. I'm gonna just go grab another pair of pants and dry clothes and put them on. You're, that's not the case, okay? So how I see it is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna protect the clothing that I have and keep it as dry best that I can. And that's why I bring rain gear with me. So if you don't wanna bring rain gear with you, that's totally fine. That covers that. So the seek, um, I'm not gonna go super in depth on this thing because I don't use it a ton, but this thing, I mean, this is like the mamma jamma of rain jackets, like I said. Uh, I brought it with me on that Idaho trip because it is known to have quite a bit of moisture, snow, rainstorms, and stuff like that. And we did get blizzards and stuff while we were there, but it wasn't anything like, 
It wasn't anything too bad that just my jacket couldn't handle. I only put this on once while I was there in the nine days I was there um, for backpack hunting. So that trip right there, we had llamas when we went in, a little bit more luxury with like the items that we could bring with us for backpack hunting specifically. I wouldn't bring this with you just because it it's not super duper lightweight and it doesn't pack down super small. Okay, the vapor is gonna shine leaps and bounds in that department. But if you're going to like on some big expedition hunt in Alaska, you're going in on horseback or something like that, or even if you're truck camping, all right, and you want something with more beef to it, and it's gonna be raining a whole lot, the seek can handle anything that's thrown at it, man. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, just holding it in your hand, you'll see like this thing is this thing is built to take some weather. So that's gonna do it. That's my rain gear. That's my pants. That's my jackets. That's everything. Um, um, I'm gonna talk. Oh, let me talk about gloves really quick. Um, so the gloves that I run uh, probably 80% of the time are these Talus fingerless gloves. They're merino, super comfortable. Great for, uh, you know, being able to like feel things with your fingertips, you know, um, you know, picking things up with your, when there's gloves on is sometimes hard. That kind of mitigates this. This is great, great piece of gear. <clears throat> Another one I bring with me is the guide, the guide glove. These are a little bit more beefy. These aren't really insulated, but they're, they're more durable. Okay. So I've actually stocked animals in these a lot and use them for that because doing like three points of contact, you know, putting your hand down on the ground. There's sharp rocks and cactus and everything like that out here. So anything I can do to like help mitigate things going, like impaling my hand, I'll do. And these are great for that. Uh, also would be great for cutting firewood or something like that in camp. Good, good, uh, good glove. And then when the temps drop, uh, I just got these recently this year. This is the Catalyst glove. If you're familiar with the Catalyst system, Catalyst jacket, Catalyst pants, this is the glove version of that. It's warm, super soft on the inside. Um, they fit great. There's like leather type of deal on the outside here. So the durability is there. Um, I wore these on that Idaho hunt and it was, um, they were, they worked out fantastic. So, um, and then there's also, I don't have these sitting here right now, but the Brooks down mitt. So we got the Brooks down jacket, Brooks down vest. There's also a mitt that for slight mace has a glassing mitt. Uh, that is a super great piece of gear. I personally haven't used it a whole lot, probably because I live in Arizona and I don't, it's not, doesn't get like super duper cold here, but um, that's a great piece to have for, you know, sitting up on the hill, it's super cold. You just want your hands to be warm and glass for hours on end, great piece of gear. So that's gonna do it. That's everything. If you guys have any questions about any of this first light gear, drop them down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, good luck in 2021 coming up here. 2020 has been a ride, right? So looking forward to 2021. I hope you all draw the tags that you're after. And um, yeah, I'm super pumped to see what First Light does in 2021. They're always pushing innovation, trying to make our lives easier out in the mountains. So keep a lookout for that stuff in 2021. I know they're, they're gonna impress like they always do. If you liked the video, please hit thumbs up. If you like the channel, hit subscribe. I super appreciate that. And until next time, thanks for watching.